introduction and again thank you to all of you who have um, joined us here today for today's session. Um, myself and my colleagues Ruth Niviolan and, and Fiona Reardon will be here to talk to you a little bit about our experiences of um, student partnership and assessment with a particular focus on using um, technology to support um, uh, such approaches. Um, I'm just going to pop the link to our slides in the chat um, so if you want to follow along yourself or you want to take a look at the slides afterwards uh, uh, please do. Uh, both Fiona and Ruth and myself have a great interest in this area. It, it kind of intersects with, with our interests in assessment and our and our interests in student engagement and, and student partnership as well. And we've uh, we, we've a lot of interesting things planned for you for the next uh, 60 minutes or so, and we'll be doing some interactivity with polls as well. So we do hope you get involved, and please do uh, pop questions and comments in the chat as well, and we'll uh, we, we'll address those um, towards the end. So what we have lined up for you today is just to kind of set the scene, give you a little bit of background uh, to ourselves and to the national landscape around student partnership in Ireland. Then we're going to talk about our project, our SAPIA project, Students as Partners in Assessment, talk about um, uh, our, our pilots ran and how technology supported them and uh, we're going to share our findings with you and then where we're going next with our project and we, we very much welcome your insights and your opinions and your perspectives throughout the presentation. So without any further ado I'm going to hand over to my colleague um, Fiona now to tell you a little bit about ourselves here at DCU. Sorry thank you Rob that's great. Um, share my video yeah so just to say we are a young uh hopefully dynamic university we like to think we are anyway anyway we're situated primarily in north dublin city so we're uh, across four campuses um based in glasnevin uh, beside the airport in drumcondra also beside the airport um so four campuses across across three campuses across those those areas we have uh, circa eighteen thousand students and two thousand staff and we have five faculties you can see listed there so Rob and I work in the, the teaching enhancement unit in DCU, and this is essentially the University Centre for Teaching and Learning. And our remit is to support academic staff to develop teaching excellence, and that's all things teaching, learning and assessment. Um, we also engage with kind of SOTL, Scholarship of Teaching and Learning, with academic staff and within our team. And we're putting more emphasis on that over recent years because impact has become such a core part of the work we're doing. And also our academic staff are really keen to get published in this space, so that's really good to see. Uh, and we support the institution's learning technology ecosystem. Thanks, Rob. Thanks very much, Fiona. Um, we're going to throw over to you folks now because we're interested in hearing from you and we're going to use the polling tool VVOX um, just to, to get some opinions and perspectives from you. Hopefully VVOX is a tool you may have encountered before. It's certainly one we use in DCU. It's part of our learning technology ecosystem. I'm just going to pop a link in the chat if you want to click on that link and that will bring you to our VVOX session for, for today's webinar. And, and throughout the webinar, we're, we're, we're going to kind of run a few polls with you. So you might want to click on that that link and and leave it open um so i'll give you all a moment just to to open that and i'm going to share my vvox um screen with you now great so you should be seeing uh the vvox president uh, the vvox screen on my screen now at the moment and i can see uh quite a few of you have joined um already so what i might do is just open up uh, our first question. So this is an open-ended text question, and it's just very simply, when you hear the terms student involvement, student engagement, student partnership, student co-creation, what springs to mind? I mean, these are terms that um, I think we hear bandied around all the time, and um, people may have different um, definitions of them or different uh, perspectives on them. And I know, I suppose, my understanding of, of this whole area has evolved due to the work that we've been undertaking and i suppose it continues to to evolve like like any other concept um, but we're really interested in hearing from you folks um what 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 do you think of when you hear these terms um and again this is an open-ended question so you know you can you don't have to you don't have to give us a paragraph uh, of an explanation uh, one or two keywords would be fine um or indeed if you if, if if nothing springs to mind or if you're if you're totally new to these terms, you know, let us know that as well. Let us know that, um, you know, this is this is very new for you. So 
I'd say about half of us have responded now. I'll just give you another few seconds on that. And we might close it off now, maybe in the next five seconds. Four, three, two, one. So let me close that off now. Apologies if you didn't get in on time. But let's just pull up the results on screen and see what you folks are all saying. Listening to students, hugely important. Core to everything, core to, you know, not just partnership, core to teaching and learning, I think, is listening, listening to our students. Involving students in design evaluation. Yeah, exit creativity, peer assessment. Excellent. I think that's going to be a theme that comes up throughout this webinar. Uh, enthusiasm, increasing motivation, opportunity to improve inclusion. Very good. Yeah student having an active role in development democratic energizing but difficult very very important very good insight there empowerment user generated content uh oh, and i like this one what level of partnership are students being merely consulted or is there an active partnership and i think again in a lot of the literature they distinguish between you know where students are maybe simply engaging you know versus partnership which is kind of more active or, or more in depth so excellent some great uh, some some great opinions from you all there thanks so much um i'm going to jump back to our slides now but please do keep vvox open because as i said we'll have a few more um questions for you later on in the session but for now i think i'm going to pass over to ruth who's going to give you just um a little bit of a background of the kind of landscape around student partnership in ireland so over to you ruth thanks so much rob and thank you everyone for having us here today delighted to be having this conversation i suppose we thought it would be useful to to frame um even our own research within the national landscape in ireland because you can't have a conversation in ireland in regards to student engagement and student partnership without um discussing the national student engagement program it has become synonymous with student engagement in our context and the the national student engagement program was launched in 2016 i think it was so so it's in its seventh year of development presently and it, it, it's really essentially provided a bedrock for, for championing a culture of student engagement and partnership um, across the higher education sector. It provides training to students, um, it, it's re recently started providing training and capacity building for staff um, and, and it's really I suppose this ethos is empowering students to be active participants um, in, in their higher education experience and to support staff to empower that process as well. So we have you know this this wonderful support guiding this work essentially and we're very grateful to have it. Uh, last year was an exciting year uh, for the program specifically because it launched a new framework um, called Steps to Partnership, which aims to, I suppose, outline a framework for how we can continue to drive a culture of student engagement and partnership. And we also have a number of other initiatives happening uh, across the country. Um, the Munster Technological University, I, I feel it's a project we continuously come back to reference um, because they have a really fantastic um, centre for promoting student engagement. And, and there's a link on, on the slide there to go explore some of um, their recent projects as well, which I would encourage you to do because we do, um, I suppose, get a, a lot of inspiration from that space. And I think it's important to note that we're on a journey, all of us are on a journey, but I think we can see a lot of tangible impact um, of, of how student engagement has moved along a journey from something that we talk about to something that we are genuinely doing um, in, in a lot of contexts even taking an example of something like academic integrity in Ireland at the moment we have a wonderful program called the National Academic Integrity Network uh, which is a, a basically a, a series of working streams um, being led at a national level to improve um, conversations and initiatives around promoting academic integrity. And there is an entire, uh, I suppose, segment of student partners involved in that project, very much driving the agenda. Um, and I think it's just a lovely example of how partnership really has developed um, across um, the last number of years. But if we move to the next slide, we might hone in a little bit on a couple of elements of the Steps to Partnership framework specifically. So you can see on this slide that there are four segments in, in this framework. We have drivers of student engagement, principles of student engagement, domains of student engagement, and enablers of student engagement. So if we're looking at drivers specifically, we can see that students as partners is a key driver of change for student engagement, which is relevant to this project. In terms of domains, we're working specifically within the teaching, learning and assessment domain, uh, which is where we're focusing today as well. In terms of principles, 
I think all principles in, in these contexts, they're always going to overlap a little bit, uh, but, but we are focusing specifically on students as co-creators um, and specifically in the context of co-creating co assessments um, in today's presentation and enablers of student engagement. You know, I, I, specifically in this context as well, um, I think we're focusing on capacity building and also innovations because we, we need to continuously be th think about how we can enhance and develop our practice um to support this domain so that's a little bit of uh, background context um, for the national landscape for this project and i'll hand back over to rob thanks a billion ruth that's that, that's wonderful and again if, uh, I, I i popped the link to the to the mstep program in the chat for anyone that's interested in in in, in exploring their website they've got great great resources and you can explore the 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 framework as well that ruth mentioned there and it's it, it's a wonderful wonderful resource and um as ruth said it's it, it, it's growing all our practice is growing and evolving over time and and i suppose the the national leadership that mstep show is 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 great for that but going from the national now to the local and uh, what we've been doing Doing in, in our own university in DCU. I'm going to hand over now to my colleague Fiona, who's going to tell you, uh, take you through um, the background of our SAPIA project. So over to you, Fiona. Thanks very much. Um, so just to say that this really came, grew out of a project we've been working on, an Erasmus Plus project we've been working on for a number of years called Integrity. Um, and as part of this project, we developed resources to support staff design assessments that promote academic integrity. And we developed a suite of, uh, I'm going to just copy and put them in the, in the chat, a suite of um, principles to promote academic integrity in assessment design. And these principles um, are kind of, we encourage our academics in DCU to use them as a sort of a checklist, if you like, when they're designing assessment. And you can see in that link there that one of the core categories, there's three categories in there, and one is the sort of the institutional level. So it's that kind of promoting high standards, expecting high standards, building capacity around enhanced academic integrity. And then the third, the second category is the actual designing of assessment to promote academic integrity. And the third category category is student ownership and these principles grew out of um, a piece of work we were conducting a literature a scoping literature review and then we worked workshop these principles both nationally and internationally nationally with our own colleagues in teaching and learning and internationally as a result of our work on the Erasmus plus project so they took about a year I suppose to develop to this point and then Rob had a particular interest in the student um, ownership element and some internal funding became available and Rob submitted um, a proposal around how we could use um, or how we could embrace students or encourage students to become partners in assessment as a way to promote academic integrity. So we moved from that then to conducting a, a scoping review, which Ruth will talk to you about in a minute. That's most of our work in the teaching enhancement begins with a kind of a literature scoping review so we can position our work in that regard. And that scoping review allowed us to develop a resource, which I'll, I'll, I'll go through with you in a moment. Um, and that resource really was aimed at sort of demystifying students as partners, because I think we now realize it actually isn't a complicated or complex um, concept. It's something very real and very natural to many of us, but many academics didn't realize this. And so the resource allowed them to see, oh yes, I'm doing some of that already, but I'd like to do it in a little bit more um, ad advanced way or structured way. So we'll talk you through the resource. And as a result, we what we did, we, we workshopped the resource to start to see could we get some interest in terms of people to pilot the different ideas in the resource. So we had eight lecturers who agreed to join our pilot um, in the first year, which is 2020, 2021, um, across 11 modules, a range of different types of partnerships across different disciplines. Uh, we did provide support, particularly around the technology that you could use to kind of leverage student, par student partnership. And we're currently still in that dissemination piece. So you have the literature review there. Um, pop the link into the chat box in a moment. And we're sharing some of our findings with you today and things like this and, and writing up a paper as well. So we're in the second iteration or full year of, of um, this project, if you like. Um, so it's sort of becoming mainstream um, at this point. So I'll pass back to you, Ruth, maybe to talk a little bit about the literature review. Thanks, Fiona. So as you can see set out on screen here, we, I suppose, initially developed the literature review uh, context using the, the PICO method. So we were looking specifically at educators assessing in higher education. Our intervention was students as partners uh, or as co-creators in assessment. 
we wanted to specifically explore the evidence in the literature on students as partners or as co-creators um, in, in, in assessment. And our outcome ultimately was to support educators to facilitate and empower students to become partners in the assessment process. And our focus really was to develop a literature review that would be quite practical and tangible in nature um, so that an educator could take the literature review see the evidence but also then see how they could apply it in practice um, so that what really was the driving force uh, behind even our presentation of the literature review itself and again in terms of context we've spoken a little bit about uh, this is the national landscape uh, but it was overall written in the context of um, the pieces that are outlined here in terms of quality assurance. Um, my background is academic quality insurance um, and within the European higher education area, it is one of the, the principles um, set out in, in core quality guidelines that we need to empower students to be active participants in their learning process. And this is one way of doing that. Um, the National Forum for Teaching and Learning in Higher Education in Ireland, I have not said that right. That was a mouthful that I should have uh, I should have written in full on screen. Um, but essentially, our national body for um, enhancing higher education in Ireland um, has done a lot of work around assessment as of and for learning. Um, so again, it was, it's building on conversations that were already happening in the sector. We've spoken about the National Student Engagement Programme. Fiona has referenced the academic integrity work. And then there's also been a lot of um, dynamic engagement around universal design for learning um, over the last number of years um, in Ireland as well, um, particularly in relation to a, a, a massive online open course that's been run um, at, over the last couple of years with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of practitioners um, engaging in, in this process. So it, it, it did feel, um, like a timely time to be engaging in this piece of work. Um, but if we move on to the next slide, what we ultimately ended up doing was examining, I think 200 articles um, that came out of our initial literature research. And we ended up narrowing down those 200 pieces of work identified down to 14 core pieces of work um, that informed our literature review. And as we went through those pieces of work, we really found that the, um, the emerging examples really fitted quite well into these three specific categories, um, which were self-assessment, collaborative grading, and assessment activities and criteria. So self and peer assessment naturally being uh, the students working on using their own autonomy to apply assessment principles to their own work and the work of their peers, um, collaborative grading, meaning we move beyond the lecturer as the sole um, assessor of a piece of work to involve other stakeholders, which may include people in the workplace who are contributing to um, a, a student's assessment and educational process, but also students themselves and empowering students to be part of their own assessment processes. And then assessment activities and criteria is really a part of the literature review focusing on students as, as, as co-creators of um, assessment activities themselves. And I suppose what's interesting as kind of an underlying, underlying, underlying point under all of these categories um, is that they promote assessment literacy, literacy for students and not only students, but in many instances, were shown to be improving assessment literacy for staff and educators as well, which I think is a really uh, lovely byproduct to remember that everyone is a winner in, in this process by empowering students, we're empowering ourselves as educators as well. Um, so that's really a whistle stop tour of, of the literature review process. Um, and as I hand back over to Rob and Fiona, you'll be seeing a little bit more detail about what um, those themes look like in practice. Thanks a million, Ruth. Actually, before we hand over to Fiona, we do just have another um, question to, to, to throw out to, to, to you folks. Um, and again, um, uh, Ruth kind of covered off the main themes that arose there from, from the literature review, things like peer assessment, co-creation of tasks and criteria, collaboration, etc. And we're really interested in hearing um, from you if, 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 if you've been experiencing or, or, or thinking of any of those kinds of practices um, yourself. So if you return to your VBOX screen, uh, hopefully you should still have it open somewhere on your device. And if not, I'm just going to pop the link back into the chat there. Um, on VBOX, you'll see a new question, uh, a new open-ended text question for you to answer. And that question is just very simply, 
what initiatives around kind of assessment and feedback and or student partnership are you aware of maybe currently happening uh, in your own context or, or or you might have heard from some other context is there anything you're interested in I, I in, in our first poll someone mentioned peer assessment i'm wondering is anyone interested in in peer assessment or indeed are you practicing any of these kinds of um uh, approaches um uh, certainly, you know, for, for us in, in, in DCU, when we started out in this journey last year, um, it, it was quite new for us. And as Fiona said, we wanted to demystify things. But in, in that process of demystifying, we actually found that a lot of these practices are things that a lot of our educators are, are doing already. Um, um, but, but, but they may not be calling it partnership or they may not recognize that it's it's partnership. So um, I would be really interested in hearing uh, from you and uh, have you got a similar experience um, so again, just 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 take a moment. And again, if 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 you're totally new to this space, maybe you're 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 not aware of any partnership uh, assessment partnership approaches being utilised in your context or neighbouring context. So you know, let us know that. Um, or or maybe you are, maybe you are involved in peer assessment or collaborative grading or co-creation with with students. And it, it would be great to to let us know that. I can see. Uh, uh, almost half of us have have responded now, so I'll give just another few seconds or so. Um, and as well, while Ruth was speaking there, um, you might have seen I also popped a link in the in the chat to the um, to the literature review. If you want to take a look at the full the full literature review, and I will say, of course, um, all of these links are, are are available in our in our slide deck as well. So you, you don't you don't need to keep track of all the links in the chat. <laughs> it's probably quite a lot uh, in there already. Um, what I might do then is I might just close off this poll in in the next few seconds. So um, apologies if 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 you don't have time to to get it in, but I'll just close it off now in three, two, one. So let's have a look now at the results on screen. Video assessments and feedback, peer assessment to complement lecture assessment, really, really good. That came up, I think, Ruth, uh, uh, quite a bit in the um, in the literature. We found, you know, a, a lecturer complementing peer assessment grades, very good. Yeah, more peer assessment, formative assessment, co-creation, peer assessment coming up. This is really interesting because, uh, as we'll see now, when we get into our into our pilots that we ran, peer assessment ended up being a very popular approach. Um, excellent, yeah, yeah. So students in later years coming up with questions for their juniors, outsourcing the creation of questions. I really like that. More self and peer review. Student involvement in quality assurance. Oh, I like that idea in VLE design. Yeah, I'm sure Ruth, that's probably tickling your fancy as well, giving your background in quality assurance. You're speaking my language there for sure. <laughs> Uh, lovely co-curricular, co-design co co of curricular, online assessment. Lovely, excellent. Some really, really interesting areas you're involved in, or areas that you are, uh, you're currently practicing in. That's great to see. And you know, again, as 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 Fiona articulated, you know, a lot of these things aren't actually. Uh, terribly, um, uh, you know, new and 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 you know unknown. They're, they're they're things that we probably have been doing for for quite some time. So thanks a million for that. Uh, you can leave um, VVox open because I think we'll have some more questions for you a, a little later. But let me just jump back to our presentation, and I think Fiona, we're going to hand over to you now to talk a little bit about our guiding resource. Thanks. Um, and, and then we'll move on to the pilots as well. Okay, so this is what the resource looks like and we um, allowed the literature review to inform this resource and then as I said we, we um, workshopped it with our own academic staff but prior to that, I didn't mention this earlier, we had some focus groups with students so we wanted to see what their thoughts were on it as well. Um, and we also invited the NSTIF project manager to, to contribute. So we, we put a lot of effort into trying to ensure that it was a workable piece, um, a workable resource um, and something, as we said already, that would try and support our academics and our students to call out um, and make explicit where, they're, where they are currently partnering with academic staff and where there's been the potential for, for more partnership. And so you'll see here, on the on the first on this slide on the first uh, the the front side of the flyer the partnership po possibilities and really the partnership possibilities are designed around developing a shared assessment literacy between academic staff and students um, and we're suggesting that we 
bring that conversation into the tutorial in the classroom as often as we can using marking criteria, assignment briefs, exemplars. So have loads of conversations in class um, to develop that uh, literacy and loads of opportunities for students to give us feedback on our assessment. But then in terms of specific examples of how you could partner, and we divided into, into you can see in the, the, the bottom um, here, low level partnership and high level partnership. And we try to, to, to differentiate between summative and formative, and sometimes they both overlapped. And this isn't an exact science, it's just to stimulate discussion and get, you, get, get ideas going. But you can see if you as an academic are new to partnering with students, you might like to, like to go to a low level partnership or if students are first year and um, kind of novice higher education learners, a low level partnership to build up their skill set and their literacy. So things like allowing them to negotiate the brief, negotiate the assessment submission date. I mean, students should always, I think, be encouraged to personalize the brief to their own examples. It makes it more valuable to them and more authentic for them. And then if you wanted to kind of think of maybe slightly, and they, they would be all at the sort of summative level, but they're low risk, if you like, or low level. And then at formative level, you could start from bringing in sort of peer assessment. Again, you could do this a first or second year. So it's a formative piece of work. It's not influencing the summative piece and self-assessment. They're really good skills to develop in our students at that point. And then as we move through, through the higher uh, level, into the higher level partnership, you're looking to co-design or co-create uh, the assessment brief the marking criteria and um, you're asking them to assess each other and, and their peers on work in progress uh, peer assessment as part of the summative work and maybe students could design elements that they want specific feedback from experts on and if we move over to the onto the next slide so the flip side of the flyer in terms of if you like there the, the previous slide lot talked about possibilities this is how can you kind of enhance that partnership or perfect that partnership and we're suggesting and again this is through our literature review and, and conversations with academic staff we're suggesting that we as academics need to be open to change be a little bit more and um, flexible and um, build in the student build our build the student capacity through those conversations in the classroom seek their input and feedback and involve them and develop that shared literacy through discussion of examplars model answers rubrics and then to remind our students so i would give them advice remind them to be actively involved and to empower themselves and to take ownership encourage them to engage in discussion with lecturers and peers around their assessment so that they can de develop that shared understanding of what's required and it, they do need some support on receiving and acting on the feedback that they get from the, the academics and their and their colleagues but when we met with students and asked them what they wanted in this partnership space they said we want loads of opportunity for dialogue we want to be able to discuss our assessment with our colleagues and with our academic in multiple different ways and they did talk about some of the concerns being about large class sizes reducing this opportunity and sometimes novice lectures are a little bit uncomfortable doing it but they want that dialogue so they can have strong direction and um, so in addition to the dialogue they think marking criteria um, should be available to everything and we fully agree formative feedback needs to be included in every summative piece self and peer assessment really helpful and exemplar is really good they were very concerned about fairness across assessment and they wanted to have this kind of conversation um, and understanding of what is uh, good across all of the students in a particular cohort but indeed across modules and a particular stage um, and then they wanted more agency more choice they, 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 they were very clear about the point that and somebody put it in the chat earlier that they are experts in their own learning so why not draw on that expertise and they want to develop those life skills so that's the resource um, itself um, I think oh yeah the next piece we'd like to share it's just a very short one minute clip we edited it out of a presentation that uh, one of our students gave and it's just so powerful when you hear it from the voice of a student Niall Henry is the student's name how important that formative piece is and that dialogue which your lecturers is and he uses the sports analogy to make his point so can you play that Rob if you don't mind I want to compare then sort of assessment cycle to the cycle that you might use um, in a professional sport setting that before a match like it like you see there there's all sort of processes that go into so that the team can perform to their best that they know exactly what they're getting into and exactly how they're going to um, 
react to different situations that happen in a match. And I think that then they go and play their match, which is comparable to doing an assessment. But then after, what happens after is just as important as what happens before the assessment or the match. That if you don't recover properly from your match, you won't be able to train properly for your next match. And similarly, if you don't learn from your assessment, you won't be able to implement that in subsequent assessments as well. Thanks, Rob. So Thanks you're going to take much. it from here, Rob? Yeah, I'll take it from here, Fiona. Thanks very much. And just uh, just to echo, I, I, I'm, that student Nile is, 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 is so insightful and, um, you know, I think he was really getting at there, going back to, to, the, to the resource, the, the importance, the centrality of things like dialogue and direction in assessment. So even if you are interested in trying a, an approach like peer assessment or co-design of, of grading rubrics or something like that, you know, it's the dialogue and the direction and the openness are all foundational to, 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 to any kind of assessment partnership approach you want to, you want to try. Um, so after we, we did this initial work around literature review, and, and 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 putting together some practical advice for our students and our academics we undertook in the last academic year we undertook our first iteration of, of piloting some of these approaches we're, we're, we're currently now coming to the end of our second iteration in this current academic year so in the in in our first um in our first iteration we recruited uh, about eight lectures across 11 modules uh, who wanted to pilot a form of assessment partnership with their students uh, it was mostly undergrad modules and you know a range from kind of first to fourth years we supported them obviously um, in 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 partnering with their students and because um uh, last year was mostly online, of course, due to the pandemic. Uh, technology played a huge role, and even even in our second year now, currently of the project, um, even though we are largely back on campus teaching, technology is still playing a huge role in supporting partnership, which we'll which we'll get into now in a moment. And um, we have been obviously um, evaluating these uh, th these approaches. Um, we have uh, 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 the findings from our first data set to share with you today, and we're just currently closing off our data collection for our second iteration. So for our first our first iteration, these are the subjects that were involved, and these are the different types of approaches that they used. Going back to the resource Fiona shared with you, you know, there's kind of like a nice continuum there from low level to high level and different approaches that can be taken. But as Fiona said, you know, it's not a, a linear checklisting type of a, a framework. It is to stimulate conversation. And what a lot of our uh, modules uh, did when they were piloting was that they, they, they mixed and matched some of those suggested approaches from the resource. Um, uh, to suit their particular needs. So you could see here on screen things like peer review, peer assessment were quite popular and choice was quite popular. Um, and, and, and one of our um, one of our um, um, piloters used co-creation of quiz questions. I think someone had popped that in, um, in in one of the VBOX polls as well. So you can see, you know, they were mixing and matching different kinds of uh, approaches to suit their their particular uh, their, their particular needs and technology was crucial to to supporting all of this really. So if you look here from the fr from the from the framework, um, you know a, a lot of low level um, uh, partnership approaches were used, and then peer assessment was also used to an extent. And I suppose that's understandable, you know, for lecturers starting out in this area. I think they uh, wanted the safety of, of 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 trying low level partnerships, so things like negotiation, discussion, choice, and etc. And then some peer assessment. Not not many went for the co-designing of briefs and the co-designing of marking criteria. So I, I, you know, that could be a, a bit, a bit scary. I think for 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 a lecturer who's just starting to open up their practice and inviting students in to partner. Uh, but uh, hopefully, our, our goal over time is to is to try and kind of bed in some of the higher level forms of of, of partnership. Um, so how specifically was technology used to, to, to support these pilots? Well, if we take uh, the low level partnership uh, first, um, you can see these involve, as Fiona outlined, things like negotiation, choice in, in, in methods or topics. And what a lot of our uh, piloters did was when they were giving uh, our, their students choice in methods or topics, um, the VLE voting and questionnaire tools were used extensively for that. So we're a Moodle institution here in DCU. Uh, the Moodle choice activity we, was used um, and the Moodle group choice activity was used to allow students to select um, particular topics that they wanted for their for their assessment or or what particular, or what particular method they would um, complete their 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 um, 
their assessment in, be it you know text, video, audio, um, etc. Um, and and those tools are, are really really fundamental to allowing students um, that that choice and that agency um, that to that they that that they want that they that they're looking for when it comes to assessment. Um, but even a lot of our lecturers also chose you know a lot of this was done in a dialogic dialogic format as well. So during class. Uh, they were integrating opportunities to discuss assessment and to uh, choose assessment uh, within live sessions. So things like Zoom polls and in-class voting and thumbs up, et cetera, via Zoom uh, were used uh, quite a lot. Uh, and, and, and Vivox as well, of course, as a polling tool was also used to allow uh, students to, to, to choose. Um, and the benefit of that obviously was um, um, in some cases it was um, uh, anonymous. So um, the, the lecturer was kind of just getting a sense of, okay, well, what topics are our students interested in or what 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 methods are they interested in, et cetera. But what was also good about that was that then when students did choose a particular method or a particular topic, it allowed for differentiated progression. So again, uh, as, as a Moodle institution, we were using features like access restriction to allow students who had chosen a particular topic to get access to relevant material for that uh, particular topic that they had chosen so they weren't overwhelmed with you know all of the material related to the assessment because they had chosen a particular thing they were able to go down that pathway and, and, and they only needed to focus on the material that uh, was necessary so that they're getting good clear direction which again going back to our resources is, is one of the things they're they're looking for uh, we use ePortfolio at DCU Mahar is our ePortfolio platform and ePortfolios are great obviously because they, they they they're very flexible the students can um, showcase themselves uh, uh, and showcase their individuality in putting together a, a, a portfolio and, and the, you know the, the web-based nature of the portfolio is fantastic for allowing um, students to integrate different formats and different methods of assessment video audio and text all in one and in fact one of the uh, one of the one of the modules that that's participating in the project this current year um, have really used e-portfolios to in a great extent uh, they, you know students have had great choice in expressing themselves a very practical module uh, on, on, around physical education they've had a great opportunity to to get involved Involved and to uh, share video clips of themselves and reflections and, and so on. So e-portfolios are, are wonderful, I think, when choice is involved. Um, where negotiation has happened, um, we've seen how discussion forums uh, on the VLE can really structure that negotiation. Because when we when we were talking with our academics about, you know, oh well, you know, in, invite the students to to contribute to criteria or contribute to, uh, uh, you know, uh, discussing, you know, dates uh, that they want to submit on you know the, the first question the first thing our lecture said was how on earth can I have a conversation like that with you know the 60 students in my class uh, and here's where the discussion forums on, on the VLE became really really useful for the lecture to actually just structure the negotiation or structure the discussion around different aspects of the assessment so there'd be a kind of a particular thread on the discussion forum to discuss different aspects and it was kind of um, it was still open obviously and students were getting involved and they were posting and, and sharing their insights and their opinions but it was done in a much more managed way then so that the lecturer was able to sort of take their opinions and and and, and put it into the design of the assessment so tools like that um, are, are really really useful for our lecturers to 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 manage the partnership process because I suppose depending on what approaches you are choosing there can be certain logistics to to, to bear in mind Looking now, kind of moving towards the more middle form of partnership here, we see things like self-assessment, peer assessment, uh, receiving different layers of feedback, etc. And um, you know, peer assessment has really become a really, peer assessment and peer review has become a really big area of interest in DCU at the moment. I'd be interested actually in finding out from yourselves. You can let us know in the chat. Um, is it the same in your own institutions? Um, uh, 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 is there a lot of peer review and peer assessment being practiced? But it's certainly becoming uh, a lot more. Uh, 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 there's a lot more focus on the, on it in DCU now. Uh, and again, as a Moodle um, institution, there's a, a great peer assessment tool called the Moodle Workshop Activity, which a lot of our staff are now embracing. Again, it's a fantastic tool for managing different um, steps of, of of peer assessment and of making it really easy for students to engage with each other and look at each other's work and offer feedback and and so on. And I know a lot of the other VLEs, obviously, I know. 
Blackboard and Brightspace have peer assessment tools um, uh, as well, and they're really, really well worth um, um, checking out. Um, sometimes a combination of tools uh, can be used. So um, in cases where there's a peer assessment happening with the Loop Workshop activity, some of our lecturers then ended up um, putting up a, a, a using questionnaire tool on the VLE to, to, to gain um, for students to kind of indicate on what particular aspects would they want feedback on their peer assessment. Um, uh, and again, as someone mentioned in the VVOX poll earlier on, they were using peer assessment with a layer of, of lecturer feedback, and that's what some of our piloters had 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 done as well. Um, peer assessment, of course, doesn't have to be um, asynchronous or, or using the VLE. Peer assessment for review can be done live in classroom, either on Zoom or, or, or in, a, in a physical classroom. And that happened in, in one of our pilots as well. Students were, um, this, that, it was for senior undergraduate module, students were offering each other um, feedback on draft um, literature reviews that they were doing. And that was done um, uh, uh, very lively, very energetically in a live, uh, class session and and there's obviously a, a great dynamism from 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 doing that um so you know sometimes we tend to think when it comes to peer review peer assessment okay well we must use uh, the vle to do it but um I, we, we have through through the sapia project seen it done very very effectively in a in, in a synchronous manner and then lastly just moving up to the high level end of the uh of the of the 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 framework where again we're talking about co-design and um getting feedback etc as i mentioned before how discussion forums can be used for um um dial for discussing with students around different aspects of of submission etc that same approach can be used to to co-designing um, uh, rubrics or, or indeed collaborative documents can be used to 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 well, when you're co-designing marking criteria. I know one of our lecturers who was uh, piloting co-design of a rubric with her students. She um, she chose not to go down the route of using a collaborative document. Um, she kept control of the, the the actual master document where she was creating the rubric, but she used the discussion forum to kind of post out. Okay, well you know on this criteria. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, um, awarding you marks, high marks for X and Y and, and you know, low marks for A, A, B and C. And through the discussion forum, the students were able to um, inform and kind of share with the, with, with the lecturer what they felt um, a, a, an excellent piece of work would look like and, and, and what, a, what a less than good piece of work would, would look like. But again, there was, I suppose, in, in all of this, there, there, there's a, a management aspect from, from the lecturer. Ultimately, you know, no matter what way you, you square student partnership, there is still still an asymmetrical power relationship and, and for obvious reasons a, a lecturer still has to retain control over 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 grading and 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 quality assurance um, etc but that's not to say that students still can't be involved and 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 inform the decision making but the the, the lecturer can can use these tools and use technology effectively to manage that that process of collaboration and 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 partnership um, so again, you know, discussion forums are are are, are a fantastic way of, of 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 facilitating facilitating that. Again, in class time for live feedback for you know, um, uh, for students to 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 seek areas that that what that they want some detailed feedback on your VBox polling tools, you know, your 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 Zoom tools, etc. For an online class are all fantastic ways for students to indicate what they want from um from the assessment and feedback. Uh, process as well. So, you know, I'm sure there are lots more tools that you can think of that will help with this um, type of, of, of these types of, of, of assessment approaches. And that's what we actually now want to move over to you. Uh, I've talked a bit there now about our different pilots that we've done in DCU and how technology was used um, often in, 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 in quite simple ways to facilitate um, those partnership approaches. But we're really interested now in hearing from you, so another VVox poll for you. Uh, based on, 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 on what we've just shared with you now, do you have any other um, suggestions for, for using technology um, to support assessment partnership? I'll just pop the VVox link again there in the chat. If any of you are still on VVox, you can, um, you can um, pop in a response to that question again just another open-ended question i'm going to share my vbox screen again uh, do, do, do. so 
So again, so what other suggestions do you have for using technology to support student partnership activities? Um, and actually, I'm just checking the time here now. What I might actually do is I might just leave that poll open for you folks in the background, um, and you can you can you can pop in your suggestions there. So any suggestions around how can you use technology to support students co-creating some assessment tasks or criteria? How can you support? How can you um, use technology to support discussion and dialogue uh, and direction around assessment? Um, you can pop a few there, but what I might do is to, we do have, I do want to get to our findings now as well. So I might just jump back to our presentation for the moment and we'll, we'll come back to our VBOX results um, in a few minutes. So as I mentioned, we, we've completed the data collection and data analysis for the first year of the project, which I'll, I'll share with you now. We're just concluding data collection for the second iteration at the moment, and, and we'll be analysing those findings uh, over, over the next few weeks. But just to quickly, and, and again, I, I won't spend too much detail on this because you do have the slides and you can you can, you can can uh, look at these in, in, in more detail. But um, just overall, we, we, we uh, conducted a survey with our, our student participants and our staff participants um, who were involved in the pilots and from our students you can see uh, the blue and the orange on screen indicate uh, strongly agree or, 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 or agree towards certain statements so some of the ones that really kind of jumped out for us is that students really feel they performed well in their assessment because they were involved because there was that element of a partnership to one extent or another students really feel like there was a, a positive effect on their actual outcome in the module which is great to see um, and we can see here students did feel involved and did feel engaged in the in the module because there was a student partnership approach being used and they also felt fairness in the assessment as well and going back to our resource fairness is one of the things that students want out of assessment so we were very very um uh, buoyed by those by those results because that's ultimately what what we want to get at with partnership is greater involvement, greater fairness, and, and ultimately better better student outcomes. So, so we were very happy to see that that uh, seemed to have come tr come true in our in our pilots. Uh, and then just a couple of snapshots of, of, of really what what the student says. So, seventy seven percent agree that they felt involved or engaged, and sixty four percent felt they performed well. And some really really interesting quotes here. We were treated like adults. Like they really just liked the opportunity to just have honest, open adult conversations with their lecturers about um, assessment and, and having the opportunity to, to get involved. They liked that it was kind of, you know, pulled away from traditional learning and it was more interactive and they felt more involved than any other module and that uh, allowed them to enjoy it more and want to do better in it. So just by changing the dynamic a bit, shifting the dial can have just a huge impact on, on students' perspectives and attitudes. Um, a couple of themes came through though in the open-ended responses to the, to the students. So they enjoyed group work. Uh, working together, they enjoyed the process of peer review and feedback. They enjoyed the variety and the uh, because these partnership approaches were new to them. They enjoyed how, how it engaged them. It was kind of something different from from the norm. Um, but you know, as always, there there are things that can be improved, and our, our practices can always be improved. And, and it's through seeking feedback with students that we can improve our practices. Uh, they did also say though that you know things like assessment practicalities really really need to be so clear for students. You know. Uh, when you know when 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 you know what format are things going to take, what the deadline is going to be, how this partnership is going to work, and you know what what the effect is going to be of of those discussions. Even though our lecturers were really being very open and giving great direction, as they felt. Um, you know, th there were still some aspects that students were a little bit unclear about when it came to assessment. So it goes to show you, I think, that the strength of ongoing dialogue and and even though you, you think you might be being very clear with students about expectations, um, you're not always um, and, and really, really is so important to be so explicit with students. Uh, we also, as I said, uh, surveyed staff uh, again and to see how staff felt about the, the, the partnership uh, approaches and they echoed, uh, if we see here, I think the, the, the blue and the red in this case indicates um, um, uh, agreement with, with the particular statement. So again, you know, aligning with the student opinion, um, uh, staff felt students perform better in the modules, which is great to see. Um, and um, the, the staff felt that 
assessment was fair and equitable as a result as well. Uh, interestingly, there was, again, if you remember our, our sample for, for, for this survey is, is quite small. There were only uh, eight lecturers involved, but you can see one lecturer here um, uh, disagreed with all of the statements. And interestingly, uh, I suspect it's because uh, I saw this in the, in the open-ended uh, results. I think that lecturer chose um, a very high level form of partnership to use with um, uh, under, first year undergraduate students and there was just a kind of a, mix ma a, a mismatch of um, expectations and experiences and, and ability. I think she went kind of too high with the partnership too fast and it didn't really work out for her. So it goes to kind of show you starting simple, starting small, you know, being mindful of that this is a journey for both the staff and the students, I think is a, a really pragmatic approach to take when it comes to student partnership. You don't have to do all the, the, the bells and whistle, shiny form of partnership straight off the back. Keep it simple and build your capacity over time. Um, again, just some highlights from, 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 from the staff, survey um, they their experience has been great and they're going to do it more in the future but they need to think more carefully about the workload and the students workload and that's really really important that you know um, innovations like student partnership are great and wonderful and there could be so many benefits but it does need to be balanced between well what 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 more are you asking students to do as a result of this or what more are you asking yourself to do as a result of this partnership approach and it's, it, it is important to be to be cognizant um, of that uh, again, the staff attitudes towards uh, uh, Sapia, you know, again, very, very positive results here. They, they want to continue it in the future. It had a, it had a, a positive impact um, and uh, they, they, they did feel it, it allowed them to shift some power uh, towards students. That, that is ultimately what the, the wider movement of student partnership is about, is about shifting that dial of power back towards students so that they have some role in, uh, in decision making processes that, that affect them. Again, you can you can take a look at that in, in in more detail. I might skip the last poll if that's okay, because I'm just conscious of 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 time, and I do want to give the last few minutes over for Q and A and discussion. Uh, but just where are we at now? As I mentioned, we're wrapping up the second year of the project, and to, even though we're on campus, technology is still playing a vital role. Some of the same approaches have been used this year: peer review assessment, quiz co-creation, rubric co-creation, e-portfolios, choice of assessment and feedback, etc. Uh, our data collection is 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 underway and we should have the, the next set of findings soon enough. And where we want to go next with things is obviously we've been uh, supporting staff and students to engage in some of these partnerships in, in a sort of small pockets of, of, of innovation. But we're wanting, I suppose, to explore wider dimensions of student partnership and assessment and kind of put together more practical guidance and exa examples for staff and Hopefully you folks will, might have some uh, 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 some suggestions for us here. We're also looking then at, at um, uh, how can we partner students in, in other aspects of assessment outside of the actual practicalities of doing an assessment, things like assessment policy, academic integrity policy and frameworks, et cetera. We're, we're, we're very interested in, in, in partnering with students in a meaningful way um, on those dimensions um, as well. So, that's where we are at. Thank you so much for, for taking the time uh, to listen to us. As I said, the um, slides uh, are available to you all to take a look at in your own time. I'll actually just pop the link back in the chat for you so you have access to it. Uh, you can take a look at that in more detail, particularly the, 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 the findings if you didn't get a chance to, to uh, uh, interrogate them all as I was wh whistling uh, through them. But please do take a look. I'll pop the link in again into the chat and um i think we'll just um throw it open now to the next few minutes for you folks any any questions or any comments thank you very much thank you so much rob and fiona and ruth for an excellent um webinar that was really fascinating and a, a great approach to uh, student partnerships if i think you've answered the, the question that was posted in the comments already it was about um the evidence of um, the student perception. But if anyone wants to ask a question now, you can put up your hand, we'll unmute you, or you can stick it into the chat area. If I may, just in terms of Florian, um, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, uh, getting the students to co-design during assessment policy review, we're actively doing that around um, academic integrity framework design for the university. So we're 
uh, working with students on that and our intention is to work more closely not our intention we would like to work we haven't a structured plan to do it but i think it'll be really useful to to maybe see if we can get some funding and bring the student voice into the policy design element yeah Alistair, do you want to, we'll unmute you now, Alistair, just one second. There we go. Or you can unmute yourself, thanks. Alistair, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, that was a really great presentation, um, loads of brilliant ideas, thank you. Um, and my question was asked in terms of the, the data and the, the outcomes. Um, I wondered, because you mentioned one tutor who had gone almost too, too, too um, far too soon, and had less suboptimal outcomes, whether there was an approach that you saw working best, whether some, you, you mentioned the subjects that it, it worked, that you um, covered, were there some subjects you felt worked better than others in your, in your results? I don't think so. Interestingly, I don't think I'm. I, 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 I'm sure Fiona, you. I don't speak for you, Fiona. I, I'd say you'd agree with me. I, I don't think subject matter actually interestingly affected the the the, the type of um, partnership approach that was that was chosen. You could see there was a very diverse range of 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 subjects that took part in 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 the first year of the project, and uh, they all kind of mixed and matched different different assessment approaches. So we didn't really find that. Uh, the subject matter uh, or or the discipline, um, you know, lent itself to to one or other greater form of 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 assessment partnership approach. Because fundamentally, what's underneath all of the assessment partnership approaches are things like dialogue and direction and fairness and so on, which are applicable to every discipline really. Um, in the case of, of of that particular lecturer who had a suboptimal experience, as uh, as you put it, I think she went in for uh, doing rubric co-designing with um, a bunch of uh, first year undergraduate students and I think first year undergraduate students need so much help transitioning anyway to become literate at being a university student and becoming assessment literate I think that was that was too much too fast and I would say that was in a particular um, discipline I, I can't remember but I would imagine if other people had done that in other disciplines they would have probably encountered the, the same issue because it's just it's, it's a bit too much of a reach I think for first year undergraduates to be to be doing that would you agree Fiona? Absolutely. Um, and I think the ones that are most effective are the ones that call it out and embed it or in, in, integrate the student partnership element. Um, so I can't think of the lady's name, but there's one lady in was it French um, and she had called out all of the partnership elements really clearly. And it was a very well designed and scaffolded assessment where part students were partnering throughout rather than sort of a, an ad hoc bolt on piece. So if it's called out and integrated with your assessment design strategy, I think it works well, no matter what discipline you're in. Great, thank you. And we are just at um, half past one. So in, uh, unless there's anything else anyone wants to add, um, we might wrap it up. Uh, Rob, Fiona, Ruth, is there anything else you want to say? I don't think so. Just thank you all very much. Um, thanks for being, thanks for coming along today, giving your time. Thanks for your engagement. Um, you have the links to the slides. Please do explore um, uh, all the links and the various resources we gave you. Please keep an eye on our website for uh, ongoing updates on, on, on this project. And we'd love to hear from you if you're doing something similar. There's opportunities for collaboration. If there's any other way we can kind of cross fertilize or disseminate or advance the practice in this area, we'd love to hear from you. Our, our contact details are, are on our slides. So thank you very much. And thank you obviously to, to, to Al for giving us this opportunity. Here today. Thank you everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week.